are these people? Quick hits. All right. Um, this is these are funny. Some are not so funny, but this one, wow. So a, a lot of people heard of Kleiner Perkins. Uh, that was the law firm that the Obama administration, the Clintons, and the Bidens had used quite a bit. Um, I, I read Sludge a lot. Sludge is a publication I subscribe to. I like their stuff. Donald Shaw at Donnie Donnie on Twitter. Um, he published an article earlier this week that a corporate lobbying firm is advising the Harris transition. Much of a surprise to nobody, of course, you know, that we've got corporate lobbying firms involved. But Covington and Burling is the new, the new Pierce, uh, Kleiner Perkins. Um, and, and then there was another one. I can't think of the other one that's involved. Um, but these are the big law firms that are involved with now the, the Harris campaign. So well, who else do they represent? <laughs> eh, nobody important. The law firm uh, that, the, that the Harris campaign has chosen to set up a possible transition team also works as a lobbyist for a wide range of American corporations and foreign clients to influence the federal government. They're just bringing it all right in house. All right. The Harris for President campaign is working with Covington and Burling on setting up the transition, according to CNN. Wonderful outlet they are. Hope they crash and burn and go out of business today. The campaign previously hired Covington and Burling to help it vet possible vice presidential picks before landing on the selection of Tampon Tim Governor of Minnesota Tim Walls. Okay. While it works on Harris transition preparations, Covington and Burling is also employed as a lobbyist for 38 other interests that include companies, trade associations, individuals, and nonprofits. No big deal, but the firm is representing Amazon as it defends itself against the FTC's lawsuit for allegedly engaging in illegal anti competitive behavior. Yesterday, a U.S. district judge partially granted a motion to dismiss part of the case after Covington attorney Thomas Barnett helped write a motion for Amazon arguing in favor of the dismissal. In 2021, Amazon had employed Covington to help it argue that the FTC chair, Lena Khan, should be recused from antitrust investigations involving the company. Now, it turns out they did not do that, and she's been very good. She's one of the few people in the federal government that's actually like done shit to hold companies accountable. But beyond Amazon, Covington and Burling is also representing TikTok as it fights the Biden administration. So now they're representing both sides. They're representing Amazon against the FTC, and they're representing the Biden or the, the Harris administration on a potential transition team. How the hell does it negotiate with itself? But there's more. Some of some more of Covington and Burling's lobbying clients, including Johnson and Johnson, COVID shots, anyone? The NFL, antitrust stuff, anyone? Samsung Semiconductor, BP America, Bombardier Aerospace, and Dine uh, Dine Brands Global. Dine Brands owns Applebee's, IHOP, and other chains, and they're of course a member of the National Restaurant Association which opposes Democratic-backed measures like the pro-union protecting right to organize, the PRO Act, and a bill to raise the minimum wage to $17 per hour. So, again, they're representing both the union, uh, the National Restaurant Association, and the administration that they're fighting against or trying to petition. Huh, I wonder how that's going to go. The Harris campaign has paid Covington and Burling more than $1.8 billion for legal services so far this election cycle, including payments that were made when President Biden was the nominee. Nice. The Harris campaign declined to comment on the possible conflicts of interest. I love that. I absolutely love that. What are they going to say? So this, this was an interesting story. I have not seen anybody talk about this. The Panama Canal is running out of water. Uh, not, not good. Um, 
The solution could displace thousands. What do they want to build? Another dam and reservoir so that they can have enough water so that if the canal drains up enough, if we don't increase water capacity in about a decade, we won't be able to provide water to the citizens. Oh, oops. So they'll have to do something. Um, so they'll have to probably displace that community so they can continue to keep the canal going. With a future crisis seeming inevitable, the canal authority is turning to a long contemplated solution. Damn the neighboring Rio Indio uh, to create a new reservoir, which could be tapped to replenish the canal when the water levels drop and dig a five mile long tunnel to connect it to the canal. Uh, the idea effectively got the green light this summer when the Supreme Court struck down an old law and in doing so expanded the canal authorities jurisdiction to include the Rio Indio Basin. In total, this is why I brought this, the project would likely take six more years and $1.6 billion. But once the reservoir is built, both the locals and the canal will have all the water they need for another 50 years. And then they'll have to worry about it again. How nice. Filling the reservoir would submerge about 17.7 square miles of land currently home to more than 2,000 Panamanians, according to La Estrella de Panama. Building the dam will require relocating schools, health centers, and churches that serve them. An additional 12,000 people, many of them farmers, live in the surrounding area. They will also need to be relocated and set up. Check that out in Grist. We talked about dock workers and that there might have been a strike last Sunday, and we proved to we proved out to be pretty damn smart, um, because we said it would it would it would happen starting Tuesday night, which it did, and that it wouldn't last more than a couple of days because at five billion dollars a day, somebody's making sure this shit gets done, and sure sure enough, it did. So what I say here is, and I've got my problems with World Socialist website, but no outlet fights harder for the workers against their union leadership, which of course has ulterior selfish motives, than World Socialist website. So everywhere, all we saw was that the longshoremen got $62 an hour and they're going back to work and the strike is over and woohoo, woohoo, everybody patting themselves on the back. All right. Except not so fast, my friend. Thank goodness for Tom Hall at World Socialist Website. Again, got my problems with a lot of things they do, but they also do some outstanding stuff when it comes to holding union leadership accountable, like here. And I didn't go through the whole article. I just clipped a couple of key phrases and paragraphs. In shutting down the strike, the ILA officials announced a tentative agreement on wages only, but not a full contract. However, workers are being sent back under a 90-day extension to the existing contract which expires on January 15th. So that means that it won't even take effect until January 15th. Whatever wage increase they got, we're under an extension of the old contract because we can't come to an agreement on the other terms beyond salary. And they're not giving you just the new salary for the 90 days. Crazy, right? The agreement on wages is rumored to be for a 61% increase over six years, but there's no agreement on other aspects, including job protection from automation. This was the biggest issue behind the strike in the first place. Yeah, wages were important. They wanted to protect their jobs. All right. Um, yes, Dr. Nick, the ILA did have a clause to still send weapons to Israel. They only wanted to impact commercial shipping, not military or cruise shipping. That's where it hurts the most is the commercial. And I get it. And believe me, I would love to see them stand in solidarity with the pro-Palestine people and not send weaponry to Israel. But that wasn't their fight. And if they did that, they wouldn't have the backing of the government. The government would go in and shut them down immediately. The dock strike demonstrated the capacity of the working class to, to stop war. I don't get that. But they could if they refused to send it and reshape society in the interests of the broad majority of the population, not the wealthy few. The same profit interests driving the wars abroad are also behind the attacks on the working class in the form of automation, 
forced overtime, and wage stagnation. Thank you, Tom Hall. Now, the last thing that I had before I wanted to get to what to watch um, was about Rockfin. And I ended up writing another article today about it. But I wrote something the other day that said, hey, I'm just wondering on the 3rd, this was Friday, anyone get paid out? You know, uh, let's go back to this for one second. Taft-Hartley. So, Scroogle, they would have used Taft-Hartley, but as the uh, the Steve, the uh, the head of the longshoreman, Howard, whatever his name was, said so eloquently, yeah, you slap a Taft-Hartley on me, we'll go back to work for, for 90 days. We're, we're required to by law, but right now we're moving 30, 30 uh, containers an hour. We'll slow it down to eh, eight containers an hour for the same money. See how, see how that does you. Yeah, we'll go back to work, but not really. Good luck. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, infiltrators also existed in the port strike. Of course they did. Infiltrators are everywhere. Um, a lot of the people that are working on the, in the media are working on behalf of union leadership, which isn't always looking out for the workers. But union leadership in this case did want what they wanted and they held out. I think they should have stayed out until they got a full contract, but... I get it. Look, five billion a day, that's a lot of scratch. And that's somebody somebody wanted to make this happen. So again, any payouts by Rockfin yet? I spoke to all the, the the creators that I know, and none of them has gotten a payout as of now. Still, nobody's gotten any rate tokens this month. I'm really worried about that as a platform. Look, I spent a lot of time. I, I'm I think we went through the, the Rockfin articles that I wrote on the show recently, and I'm very disappointed with, with what they've done. Go check that out at IndieMediaToday.com. All right. I also did pull to show that, uh, so Roar Media, Amber said that she had not been paid out her little nonprofit, and they had been relying on it. They're going to have to look for alternate. And I said that it seems to be, it's disappointing. And here were all the transactions that were happening all right, 34,000 Ray tokens, 22,000, 35,000, 25,000. Who's making these kind of transactions? None of us. So maybe they were preparing to pay out. I have not heard of anybody getting paid out. Again, this was Friday or Saturday. Still nothing's happened. All right. And so I wrote this article today that not only that, but it looks like Martin, the CEO, has set up a new company. Uh, based in Austin, called Black Whale LLC. And if anyone's familiar with the symbol of Rockfin, it's a whale. So that that worries me. All right? Um, again, we are no longer on Rockfin. There are different ways to contribute and to support INN and the show. We really appreciate if you do. Um, Cash App is the easiest way least amount of fees and puts money into the into our bank accounts in a couple days. Then we've got Kofi and the QR code up there will will get you to Kofi and you scan that with your phone. You can give us a couple a couple bucks, five bucks for a coffee. PayPal's the way to do it. Rumble, Rumble Rants like Anna was doing over there on Rumblays. And um so okay. I had let me go to my single. Good. Hi everybody Wow, this is an this is a view you guys don't see much, but yeah, Reef uh, Reef Internet must have really gone to fluey and crashed out. Um, but I did have some things I also wanted to show y'all. Um, some reminders, some recaps, some check this out. So, anyone know who this guy is? Julian, yeah, and and. Reef would have a funny sound bit from Trailer Park Boys where he talks about the 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 licky leaks, the dicky leaks. Yes, the guy who started dicky leaks. Um, Julian Assange. This is a Zago Brothers illustration. Um, one his case or was it was finally deemed this week that the detention and conviction of Julian Assange and their chilling effects on human rights. He was a political prisoner, which we all knew. But it's nice to have it actually like confirmed in writing by the Council of Europe. We actually covered this live at 2.30 in the morning Eastern time on Tuesday night. It was something to listen to Julian. 
give a first prepared speech, then answer reporters' questions off the cuff for an hour. He got tired towards the end. You could see it. I was crying just seeing it, honestly. It brought me to tears. Um, if you want the alternate view of it, the skeptical view of it, the he looked like a hostage giving a speech with a gun to his head view of it, you can check out AM Wake Up's coverage of it on Wednesday morning. It might have even been T-Lev Tuesday, but I think it, I think it, it might have been T-Lev Tuesday morning on AM Wake Up. Um, Ryan, Christian, Pasta, Jardula, and uh, Steve broke it down, and they did a hell of a job kind of poking holes. The biggest thing, of course, to me that, that was the red flag was the Navalny stuff to me that was linked to um, talking about equating Ukraine and Israel, which was silly. I think that is a lot of Stella's influence. We know that she's been friendly with Mr. and Mrs. Navalny or was friends with Mr. Navalny prior to his death. Um, and I thought it was remarkable how gathered he was in his thoughts, how measured he was. He was confronted and asked about the torture he had suffered at Belmarsh, and he did not answer that question. I understand why. I would like to hear more, of course. You know, look, we get what we get. But at the same time, how controlled was that? And look, I'm just happy to see him start to make that road back. Um, and hopefully he'll figure out the rest of it. Uh, that Ukraine is not our friend. And I think he knows that. But that Israel is not our friend. And I think he knows that. And that those two situations are completely not the same. That Israel is charged with the care of the people in Gaza versus Ukraine, which is attacking their own citizens. All right. Uh, I would say I would the, uh, equate the people of the Donbass with the people of, of Gaza and what the Israeli government is doing to what the Zelensky government has done to the Donbass. I think that that's a fair comparison. That's not what Julian was trying to say. And I, I think that that, you know, in time, he's going to read up and study up and he's still recovering. And we understand that. Um, again, it was good to see him. It was good to hear his voice. It was good to see his mannerisms and his facial expressions. Um, anyway, so congratulations to Julian Assange and, and thank you for everything you you've done to sacrifice for us, all of the reports and all the, all the risk and everything that you've done and shout out to Zago for the beautiful illustration. Okay. You can also watch that on consortium news. We did not put it on our YouTube channel. We ran it on rumble on kick on Twitch. Um, you can watch the replay on rumble. If you ever want to, to see what Julian had to say. Um, yeah, that was the funniest moment. Um, it actually kind of made me a little, a little sad when Stella reached over and muted his mic. It just kind of, I, I, it didn't sit well with me. Uh, everybody laughed. I didn't think it was funny, but I see things a little differently about that. And as does Anna and some others. So, um, speaking of Zago brothers, support the indie media awards. You see that banner up there? Thank you to Charlie Mack and John H and everyone who hooked up on Friday night on the clip show uh, to, to make that number grow. We also, again, got all the INN people done. So all of the um, existing outlets, all the existing uh, members uh, of the Indie Media Awards are part of this. All of their pictures are, are there, and you can go to each individual one and see that for them. Uh, John Pilger, may he rest in peace also even. So all of these, check them out. Beautiful artwork and illustration by the Zago brothers. Shout out to them. They're, they're great. He's amazing to work with. Um, I also wanted to, you know, in, in asking people for support, just remind everyone that last, last month we streamed as a network 28 out of 30 days. The only two days we missed were the 16th and 17th, which is funny. Um, in September, but we do need all of your support to keep this going. We got hit with a $250 Canva bill for the year. Our restream costs 700 bucks. 
domain names and hosting. I keep getting hit by GoDaddy for Indie News Network, Indie News Dot Network, Indie Media Today. Like I've got you know thirty different domain names, and all those cost money to maintain. Plus, we do all the production, all the live streaming, thumbnails, editing, clipping, all the stuff you see. That doesn't even count the clips. All right. Certainly need all your support. But we're not the only ones. Fuck cancer. Our, our, our good friend Shanda. The only other co-host of this show prior to the Jets joining us earlier tonight. Thanks again to Jesse and Jess for joining us. But... um. They played at Shanda's benefit show, which was tremendous, tremendous, just a tremendous show. All right. They've now gone over $11,000. Thank goodness for, for everyone. Thank you to everyone who's donated and contributed. Uh, we gave what we could. It's been a rough couple of months. We've had some insane car bills show up and everything. I know everyone's strapped and it's tougher than ever, but if you can, if you can, please, I will drop the, the GoFundMe link here in the chat tonight. Um, always doing what we can to support our independent media sister, Shanda and Oz, Beauty and the Boomer. They were live Friday night, if uh, Saturday night. If you didn't check that out, by all means, please go check that show out. Great show. Um, <clears throat> of course, we have the INN newsletter. Every I'm now updating this every day. So every day, if you subscribe for free, you'll get an email giving you all of the live streams, premieres, and articles for that day. The Dissident published something today. You didn't even know. Uh, but if you had, if you got INN newsletter, you would know and you'd be able to link to it and read it. Unless you were subscribed to The Dissident, of course you know that. But Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we still send out a weekly update as well, giving you a recap of all of the live streams and articles published throughout the week. Right. And that's all for the low, low, low price of zero. Absolutely free dollars. All right. Uh, but we are value for value here. We do rely on your financial support. And that's where we do so. So let me go back here. All right. And then I had two more, three more tabs again. That's the Rockfin update. Not good. Not good at all. Not good. All right. This is a follow up. And you can see this. I'll go through this probably. I'll be on Hardlands Media tomorrow morning, by the way, talking about this. And I will be on AM Wake Up on Tuesday morning to discuss this with Steve. Uh, again, Indie Media Today. Not just the Indie Media Awards are on Substack, but this is my Substack. This is where you get all the clips for How Do We Miss That? You get live stream alerts with details on what's going to be in the rundown and in the show. You get original articles like the one I wrote tonight about Rockfin. That you, for whatever reason, isn't even here. Oh, I know why, because I haven't refreshed it since I published it. There it is. So all the clips, the weekly update. Sometimes I share some INN stuff. But, um, yeah, subscribe that. Again, low, low price of free $0. $0 for all of this. All right? Pretty good. Pretty Pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. Wait, what the? Thank you very much. That's really nice. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. And then finally, two more finally. Thank you to everyone. We're so busy. We didn't even know we hit 5,000 followers on Twitter X. Yay. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate Don't all you. Don't be your... rude. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm not going to be rude. He is a sick puppy. No, come on, man. That's That's not nice. But we did get to 5,000 subscribers, uh, followers on the tweeters. Thank you so much to everyone who follows, share, support at Get Indie News on Twitter, x.com x slash at Get Indie News. We're up to 5,008 already. Look at that. We got five more from when I clipped it. Again, we are no longer on Rockfin. There are different ways to contribute and to support INN and the show. We really appreciate if you do. Um, Cash App is the easiest way least amount of fees and puts money into the into our bank accounts in a couple days then we've got Kofi and the QR code up there will will get you to Kofi and you scan that with your phone you can give us a couple a couple bucks five bucks for a coffee PayPal's the way to do it rumble rumble rants like Anna was doing over there on rumblaze 